think that's what he's going through now, I think. So I'm going to go back a little bit. I'm a big television guy, and I love the Young Rock. And I'll be honest with you, all the stories they were telling, I had no idea that you had that involvement with the Rock. First, I want to talk to you about your relationship with Rocky's father, the great Rocky Johnson. Can you tell me anything about that? Oh, my God, yeah. He was like a second father to me, but the one that let me drink and smoke and do whatever I wanted, you know. But uh, what happened was, like I said, I'm the world's worst of years, maybe 85, 84, 83. I don't, hell, I don't know. But years and years ago, I was working for Bob Goggle in Kansas City, the old original NWA, Central States Territory it was called at the time. And uh, Rocky was there. And that's when I was just getting my feet started trying to manage. Um, so Bob Goggle would just have me in a suit and sit in a chair in the corner and don't do anything. And if it was time for me to do something, get up and do it, go sit back down or whatever, you know. And Rocky knew I could do a hell of a lot better than that. You know, I, I was active. I could run around the ring. But Bob Goggle was like, you know, the old school. I mean, God bless Bob Goggle. I loved him. God rest his soul. That just, he was old school. I mean, if he was still alive today, he'd probably be 100 years old, you know. So right. um, he didn't go for the entertainment type thing. Well, Rocky knew that was where I should be, you know, what I should be doing. So he goes, why don't you come to Hawaii and work for the uh, my Vias? I'm helping doing the booking over there, and we'll let you manage uh, over there. Well, that's when I went, me and Rocky became very tight. I was over there managing and running around and doing all my, you know, stuff and getting over because I mean, I ain't gonna brag, but I was pretty damn good when I was young. I, you know, that's not really bragging. It's me just being confident in my own abilities. I was getting over. Um, Lawler came over to Hawaii in, in whatever year it was, and asked Rocky if I could manage him that night in the event. Lawler loved the way I managed him because Lawler was the bad guy to heal mm -hmm. over there. So uh, one thing led to another, and that's how I wound up getting my break in Memphis. So. Uh, you know, I went from Hawaii to Memphis. Mm -hmm. So Rocky was instrumental in, uh, you know, how, you know how things just, you know, what's the old song, uh, chain of events, uh, cause and effect, chain of events, all the chaos makes perfect sense. And, you know, Rocky and Lawler, you know, it all came together because of Rocky bringing me to Honolulu from Kansas City. So that's how that began. And then... Uh, of course, Dewey, Dwayne, The Rock, the great one, Rocky's son, of course, everybody knows. There's no spoiler alert there, you know. And uh, uh, not long after that, Rocky came to Memphis Territory with Dewey, his son. And a lot of that is uh, portrayed in the show, Young Rock. But Is that realistic, the way they portrayed it, or is it kind of just it's, like well, no, freedom? It's, it's realistic, but they added comedy and you know, things that didn't actually happen. Right. But in theory, it's all realistic. Just, what's the word, embellished or exaggerated or whatever. But, yeah, Rocky asked me, could uh, Dewey live with me? And I said, yeah, and Rocky went off and did his thing, and Dewey and me, I mean, I'm like 19, and he's like 12 or whatever it was, you know. So what a hell of a father figure I was. You know, or he was four clearly feet. clearly a pretty good one, considering how the guy turned out. Turned right? out, yeah. yeah. So not but, too bad, not too shabby. Yeah. So we, that's how me and him got close. And once again, all these chain of events. So I'm, I'm I told you, the show is, goes into more in depth stuff. So I, this is kind of a tough question for okay. you. you. You said it yourself. You, you got pushed into his father figure role, and you obviously you did a fantastic job. Had many guys in here that had relationships with Rocky Johnson, and even the show kind of shows that Rocky seemed to be very aloof and, in a lot of points, seemed not to be caring towards his wife and the family. Uh, and to be honest with you, like cheating on his wife on a consistent basis, right? And I'm sure Rocky or De Dewey knew this was happening. The young Rocky, how was that affecting him knowing that his father was doing this to his mother? Well, to be quite honest with you, uh, back in when he was a teenager, staying with me, I don't know if he knew that was happening or not. He just knew that Rocky was off doing his own thing. I'm, I don't think Dewey, I mean, uh, Rocky Sr., you know, Rocky Johnson, was letting his son know that. And 
I certainly didn't feel like it was my place to, you know. Sure. So, no, honestly, I, I, I don't think that was an issue. Just him being absentee a lot. I think but but you could. I'm just saying, you could see on the show he loves his father, but you could see the way it's written that he makes sure that as an audience member, you knew that his father was not doing right by his. Yeah, mother. I think that th- that that that's part of the realism of it. They were showing it. It wasn't. This might outdate me, but you know, it wasn't. The Ozzie and Harriet family, or the you know the, the what I you know what I mean, one of those shows where every, Beaver Cleaver family. Yeah, it wasn't obviously, but the show itself, as you asked a minute ago, going around the back around to what you asked, was it realistic? In a lot of ways, I never. Everybody asked me, "Did you used to really cook eggs in the toilet?" No, I didn't do that. <laughs> so that's something that's funny. But we were living in a little, uh, you know, quote unquote. Uh, Old shack by the railroad track. It wasn't really. It was a, just a cheap motel. But uh, it was all I could afford at the time. You know, I didn't cook eggs in a toilet, but we were living in a little cracker box. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, sure. And a lot of those different things. Like, I, I bought Dewey his first car. But in the show, I guess timeline-wise, they showed him and some guy at a pizza place in Pennsylvania bought his first car. Well, it was in Tennessee, Nashville, downtown Nashville and Lower Broad. We got him his first car. But they changed that. For whatever reason, I don't care. I mean, I didn't get it, but I mean, I was okay with it. All right. Um, but yeah, the show itself was, uh, like I said, there was a lot of uh, embellishments. But other than the car purchase thing, most of it, at least the parts that I was involved in, were accurate but embellished. That'd be the best way to put it. Now, was he a troubled like? They also, portray him as a troubled teen, and now here you are in his father role. How, what kind of pressure was that on you? <laughs> well, let me put it like this. I was barely out of my teens at the time, right. too. And and this ain't like I'm t- talking on Dwayne. He would tell you this himself. He even had him put it in the Young Rock show. Hell, he would go out and shoplift stuff. And, and he'd come in and say, uh, oh, yeah, the guy at the store uh, knew who I was because uh, of my dad. So, um, you know, he gave me this uh, shirt or he gave me this camera or he gave me this. I didn't just fall off the turnip truck. I said, Okay, I says. Well, next, you know, back then I used to smoke cigarettes. I don't now, but yeah. I said, okay. Well, next time you go to the store, see if the guy'll give you a carton of uh, whatever I was smoking at the time. It, you know, and then it's all. Oh, I'll give you a, a, a case of beer. You know, right, right. And, you know. Of course, I was like, Jesus, Christ, I know what you're doing. <laughs> right, right. So I wasn't much of a, you know. You were you were enabling, right? Yes, but we grew out of that, of course. <laughs> right. That's great. Oh my God. So how's your relationship with him now? Do you Fantastic. still have, do you I mean, still have a relationship? Yeah. Matter of fact, my phone kept texting. I don't like to, to – uh, I'm going to see it, make sure it wasn't him because that would be very interesting if it was. Um, <laughs> no, it wasn't. But, yeah, he texts me uh, on a regular basis and sends me voice mails, voice texts, whatever you call it, voice memos. And uh, we stay in touch. Yeah, we're very close. It's like He's one of the five people in this world I would die for, and I really mean that. On the Dan and Benny show, you tell a story about uh, him getting you a truck, right? And I've, yeah. I really love that story. So to fans that didn't hear it on that show and tune into this show, could you tell that story again? Yeah, and also I'm just the people can see this, the story I'm telling. Yes. Just, just Google it on YouTube or whatever. How you, whatever. You know, I'm not technical. But, All over. You got it. Yeah. But um, basically, uh, Young Rock uh, season, I believe it was season two. It might have been season one. I can't remember was being filmed in Atlanta, which is only like six hours from Memphis, give or take, where I live. So they said that they're going to put me on a little uh, cameo uh, on the show. It had to be season one because Ryan, the actor that plays me, wasn't even in the picture yet. Downtown Bruno right. wasn't in the picture yet. It was still when he was a child or whatever. So they, they had me be an audience member, like the grown-up Dwayne, was running for president or whatever, you know, if you've watched the show. And they're like an audience, like hollering out things to him or whatever. So they just had me, like an inside joke. I'm in the audience. Hey, you, or whatever. I said, I don't even remember what I said. So uh, anyway, I, that's what I was down there for. And truthfully, f- for me to get a little payday, he was throwing me a bone. That's great. So uh, I got there the day before for wardrobe fitting or whatnot. And now you guys were filming in Australia, though, right? No, I, that was that was season two when the pandemic. Gotcha. Came, okay, I go didn't go. Yeah, all right. I did all mine on Zoom. Okay. <laughs> you zoomed it, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> but season one, uh, they just brought me down to Atlanta. So then uh, Dwayne says, uh, "We're gonna have them, you know, interview you and me together as 
our reunions. I hadn't seen him in like seven years or something at that time. So we were talking. He goes, tell the story when you, you and me got together and you got me my first car. And we're talking. And the guy's filming it with the you know camera. And about that time, this truck comes driving in right into the thing. And I'm thinking, oh, God, we're going to do this all over again. I just thought it was some random person drove the truck into the shot. And he goes, well, he goes, you bought me my first car, so now I've got the opportunity to repay you by telling you this is your brand new truck. Mm -hmm. I almost fell on the floor. I mean, I, I mean, I literally cried. Sure. Bought me a brand new truck, gave it to me, lock, stock, and barrel. And uh, I said, oh, what do I do now? Do I drive it home? He goes, no, we're going to have to put it on a flatbed truck and bring it to Mississippi. And uh, they, they brought it on a flatbed truck, and I went and got the, you know, tags, put in Mississippi tags, took it out of his name and whatnot. And, yeah, that was a wonderful thing. I didn't expect it. I didn't, I mean, I don't know what to say. It's just one of the most wonderful things, if not the most wonderful thing that ever happened to me, you know. Well, it, 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 it's good that someone... Again, we could go back to, as you know, again, you're saying you were practically his age anyway, but you, you, you influenced his life and you made him a better person. And it's great to see someone repay someone back at, in some sort of fashion. Right. right? So pretty good story. Yeah, I love it, that story, yeah, man. He's just a great and wonderful person. He's, he really is. He's a fantastic person. Um, he, he hasn't went Hollywood. I mean, literally. Yes, he's in Hollywood. Okay, don't type away. I mean, <laughs> but you know what? He has a, He's still the same guy that I knew. I mean, obviously, he's financially in, uh, on Novocaine, you know what I mean? And sure. And, and he can do whatever he wants. <laughs> but, I mean, as far as the person he is, he's the same guy just with, with better uh, uh, items to accompany with. You know what I mean?